What I didn't hear it. So, well, the, whole, the whole thing about the plug is the ego. You know? <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, it's a great success to have Rabbi Billet with us. Rabbi Billet was uh, for many, many years one of the mo- the Rav of one of the most prominent congregations in North America, and Baruch uh, Hashem, it's a great success to have him here, and he's always available to us to to help out, and it's. He has a lot of time to share, and we're excited to have him here. So, now that 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 puts me on the spot because I don't have much to say. Now I, I'm I'm substituting today for Rabbi Golden, uh, who I understand is in the states, and uh, hopefully he will return uh, ASAP uh, uh, to give his classes. Um, so I'll I'll begin with two anecdotes. One anecdote was. Um, I, I studied at YU, and my two Rebbe's in YU, my first two years, I had Rav Aaron Lichtenstein, and then I had the Rav for seven years, Rabbi Soloveitchik. And one of the issues that always comes up in any yeshiva, even in YU, was what happens on uh, Yom HaTzmut. You're supposed to say hal, not supposed to say hal, hal with a bracha, hal without a bracha. So, I remember... Um, uh, Sometimes after the shear was over, we used to walk Rabbi Soloveitchik to um, a... Um, it, it ended after the cafeteria closed in YU. So we used to go to a, um, a, kosher del- a dairy delicatessen, which was across the street from the main building of Yeshiva University. And it was called, uh, I think, uh, it wasn't called Delicious Dairy. It was called, we called it the Greasy Spoon, uh, whatever it was called. We called it the Greasy Spoon. I, I, I also remember, uh, <laughs> you know, this just, just reminded me, that when, when I graduated YU, the, the geniuses who did our yearbook, it was one of the worst yearbooks you could ever have, did the yearbook in three parts, and they did articles on, uh, on uh, an article on eating at YU, and they wrote about this restaurant that the potato pierogan tastes like they got a lube job at the nearest shell station. We came there after Rabbi, after Shear with Rabbi Soloveitchik, and the, the owner, who was a Holocaust survivor, was livid, and he, he says, Rabbi Soloveitchik, and he goes, those, B-A-S-T, I'm not going to finish the word, look what they wrote about me, those, and Rabbi Soloveitchik says, calm down, calm down, no one reads the yearbook anyway, <laughs> and then, then he said, then the guy goes back in and privately, Rabbi Soloveitchik says, no, you know, when you say something that's true, it's not Lush and Hara, so um, in any event, um, um, we were stand, uh, Rabbi, uh, so um, we we're standing outside of the greasy spoon, and someone asked Rabbi Soloveitchik about the saying of Hallel on Yom Asmut. And Rabbi Soloveitchik said, in my opinion, if you should say Hallel, you should say it without a bracha. And I remember uh, one year Rabbi Vaji Yosef came to speak at YU, and he spoke on the subject of Hallel on Yom Asmut, and he said that I, I went over this entire shir, the Rav was at the, at the, at the uh, shir of Rabbi Vaji Yosef, and uh, Rabbi Vajir Yosef said, I went over the shear with uh, Rabbi Soloveitchik, and I wouldn't give the shear unless Rabbi Soloveitchik was comfortable with what I had to say. Now, Rabbi Vajir Yosef also has a lengthy, uh, one of his response to literature in, in Yechavadat, and he may, may also be in Yabiyah Omer, about the saying of Hal and Yomot, and don't forget that Rabbi Vajir Yosef was, uh, for 10 years, the chief rabbi of uh, Medinat Yisrael, Sephardic chief rabbi. So I'm going to just... Um, relatively briefly, uh, give you a, a, a review of some of the literature on this and tell you a few more things, and, um, and uh, that will be the, the class. Now, you know that when you come to holidays that aren't found in the, uh, in the Bible or in the Talmud, and you're going to create a new holiday, generally speaking, it's a, it's, it, it's a, it's a problem of, uh, you know, of Baltosif, you know, possibly, uh, creating an, an unnecessary hol- a holiday, but let's say it's legitimate to celebrate. Certainly, it's leg- legitimate to celebrate uh, miracles, and it's legitimate to say thank you to God for things that, at least we believe, is was a very important thing for the Jewish people and a miracle in our time. Uh, but if you're going to introduce a prayer, there has to be some basis for it. You just can't put mm-hmm. prayers in, you know, off the top of your head. And one of the important prayers is is Hallel. Right? And halal is what is said in this country uh, with a bracha. I will tell you that uh, in the beginning, until Rav Goren became the chief rabbi, it was said without a bracha, which means in, when, when Rav Herzog mm-hmm. and Rav Untermann 
and Rav Huziel and Rav um, uh, and Rav Nisim uh, were were the chief rabbis. It was said without a bracha, and uh, Rav Gorin introduced the idea of Hallel uh, with a bracha. If you know anything about Rav Ovadi Yosef and Rav Gorin, you know you know that whatever one said, the other said otherwise. <laughs> so Rav Ovadi Yosef was of the opinion that it should be said without a bracha, as was the, I mean, I have to say, as was the tradition of both Ashkenazic and Sephardic chief rabbis until Rav Goren. Rav Goren was the contemporary and the chief rabbinate of Rav Avadji Yosef. So, one of the major sources of Hallel uh, is found in the Gemara in Meseches Erech, and it's found, this is found in other places as well. Um, so, uh, what it says over here is, uh, 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 it's at the top of the page. Dhammer of Yochanan Mishum Rabbi Shimon ben Yotzadek. Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Shimon ben Yotzadek, Shmona Osor Yomim Shayachet Gomer Behenes Hahalel. There are eight days. The Gemara Sahalel means to say the entire Hallel. It means to, to say, we, we, in, on Rosh Chodesh, for example, we skip Lolanu and Ohafti, we skip two paragraphs. So that's called. In, in the lingo, chatzi halel, it's not, it's not really actually chatzi, half, but it's a, an abbreviated halel, as opposed to the halel that we say on the entire holiday of Sukkot, the entire holiday of Hanukkah, uh, the first day of, uh, of Pesach, we say it on Shemini Yetzirah as well, we say it on Shavuot as well, uh, that's called halel, and on Rosh Chodesh we say what's called chatzi halel. Okay. So he says there are 18 days, shahayachid, when an individual Gomer Bahenas Hal says the entire Hallel without skipping any paragraph. Shmoni Mechachag, the eight days of Sukkot. Now there are really seven days of Sukkot, but the eighth day is Shmini Atzeris. Shmoni Yimech Hanukkah, that's 16, eight days of Hanukkah. Yom Tov Rishon Shal Pesach, that's 17. V'yom Tov Shal Atzeris, that's Shavuos, 18. Ubagola, and in the diaspora, Esrim Be'echad, because you know we have two days of Shavuos, two first days of Pesach, and we have nine days of Sukkot, which we call in the, in the diaspora Simchas Torah. Right? Uh, t- so, Uvagola, Esrim Vechad, Tisha Yemei Hachag, nine days of Sukkot, Shmoni Yemei Hanukkah, 17, Shnei Yomim Tovim Shel Pesach, 19, Shnei Yomim Tovim Shel Atzeres, 21. So then the Gemara wants to know, Maishna, why is Sukkot different from Pesach? Sukkot and Pesach are both, both the long holiday, so to speak, where there's a yuntif at the beginning and a yuntif at the end, and cholam oed in between. So my shno, why is chag, in, in, in Talmudic lingo, chag is, is sukkahs. My shno, but chag, why is sukkahs different? The amrin and kol yoma. O my shno, but pesach, the low amrin and kol yoma. Why is pesach different? We don't say it every day. Now on pesach, we say halal every day. But yeah. after the first day of pesach, we only say chatzi halal. We only say half of halal. We don't say the whole halal. Right, so the Gemara says, the Chag Chalukim B'Korban Oseihem, the Pesach ain't Chalukim B'Korban Oseihem. Every day of Sukkot, if you familiar, you recall the Musaf of, of Sukkot, every day of Sukkot is a different carbon Musaf. The numbers of animals that we bring are different every day. And since every day has a different carbon, every day has the status of a new Yom Tif, and hence, the Yom Tov requires Hallel, full Hallel. The Pesach ain't chalukim b'karban oseim. Pesach, once you brought the carbon on the first day of Pesach, the carbon, the sacrifice is the same for the rest of Pesach. So it's you, you don't. It's not a new holiday every day. Anyway, another reason that Pesach is different that this is Jewish uh, morality. Um, the, the, but this, this only re- really would refer to the seventh day of Pesach. Mara yeah. says that God says uh, to the angels, the angels started singing when the Egyptians were drowning at the sea, right? Uh, Kriya Samsef, and God says to the angels, Masa Yadai Tovim Bayam Batem Shira. How could you sing when these, the Egyptians are drowning? You know, are you allowed to sing when the Raisi's helicopter went down? I mean, maybe. But Masa Yadai Tovim Bayom Batemam Shiri. These are human beings. You can't you can't so therefore we, we limit the Halal to Khatsi Halal because we want to acknowledge that uh, the Egyptians died. Anyway, so now the Gemara wants to know, okay, fine. So you're saying that the Halal is a function of a special carbon different than every other day of the year. 
So Shabbos, the Chalukah B'Korban HaSehalema, so we should say Halal on Shabbos, because the Korban, the sacrifice that was brought on Shabbos, is different from the sacrifices that are brought every day of the week. So maybe we should say Halal. So the Gemara says, Lo Ikri Moed. You only say Halal on a Moed. A Moed is a holiday which is dependent upon the, the, the new moon, the Rosh Chodesh. Those are Moadim. Uh, the, the, the holidays are dependent upon, based in declaring a new month. That's called a Moed. Shabbos is not a Moed. Shabbos is a fixed day in time since the creation of the world. Shabbos is the seventh day of the week. But it, does, it doesn't have a particular date. It's the seventh day of the week. So Shabbos is not a Moed. Rosh Chodesh. So Rosh Chodesh, Nikri Moed. Rosh Chodesh is in the parsha, is in the chapter of the Torah of the Moedim, of the festivals. So, so Rosh Chodesh, the Ikri Moed, which is called the Moed Lemo, let's say full Halal on Rosh Chodesh. So the Gemara says, Lo Ikdish Be'asiyat Melacha. Rosh Chodesh, there's no full Easter Melacha. The prohibition to do work that exists on Yom Tif does not exist on Rosh Chodesh. You're allowed to do Melacha on Rosh Chodesh. Now, it might be that women have a custom, a practice, or something that they, they, they limit what they do. I mean, I don't think that that happens too much today. But in any event, you are allowed to do technically what would be called melacha for Yom Tov. You're allowed to do on Rosh Chodesh. And, so, and, 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 and the, the prohibition of melacha gives more character, more fest, a more festive character to the day. So Rosh Chodesh doesn't have it. The song, what's the song here? How does the Gemara interpret the song? The song, Hallel, should be like the day in which the holiday, the festival, is sanctified. That's why there's also a practice to say Hallel on the night of Pesach as well. Um, you know, some people say it in shul, but even if you don't say it in shul, you say it during the Haggadah. You say Hallel during the Haggadah, right? So, um, and, and, and Rosh Chodesh is not attached to a festival. Rosh Chodesh is an independent day. Rosh Hashanah v'yom ha-kippurim, ikru mo'ed, v'iktush v'asiyas melacha lema. So what about Rosh Hashanah yom kippur? They're part of the, the, the chapter in the Bible of the Moadim, of the festivals, and there is a prohibition to do Melacha on, on, on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Lema say halal. So the Gemara says, Mishum the Rabbi Abahu, because we have the tradition that we got from Rabbi Abahu, the Amar Rabbi Abahu, Amru Malachi Hashares, Lifnei HaKadosh Baruch the angels of, 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 of uh, the angels who served God and the angels of grace said before God, Ribbonu Shalom, Ipnei Ma Ein Yisrael, Omrim Shira Lefanecha Barosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Why don't we, why don't we, um, why don't we say Shira and Rosh Hashanah and Yom HaKippurim? And the answer is, the answer is, Amalhem, Efshar, Melech, Yoshe, Valkise, Hadin, Vesifre, Hachayim, Vesifre, Mason, Psuchim, Lefanov, Vesrael, Omrim, Shira, Lefanai? Is it possible that Jews, they're going to be judged? They're trembling before the, the court, the heavenly court. They're going to be judged for life and death. How can they sing? You know, they're, they're, it's very scary. I don't expect Shira. Uh, the Rambam, just incidentally, that that's not the subject of the Shia, has a slightly different version. He says, why don't we say, Halal Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur? Lefisha enam yemei simcha yaseira. They are not days of extra joy. So some, you know, they say the Vilna Gon is Medayek, but they are days of simcha, just not simcha yaseira. And so for the Vilna Gon, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur are very happy holidays. And truthfully, for all of us it is, if the, if the result... Uh, of the uh, reckoning is is good for us. All right. Hanukkah, the lohachi, the lohachi. Hanukkah, there's no Eastern malacha. There's no prohibition to do malacha, and and it's not a moed. And we say halal on Hanukkah. So the Gemara says mishum nisa. The halal of Hanukkah is a different halal than the halal of the festivals. The halal of the festivals have to do with the sanctity of the day and with the prohibition to do melacha, to do uh, the, what's pro, you know, prohibited acts. But the, the halal of Hanukkah is a function of the miracle. Ha, the, the, it's a function of the miracle. Um, Sogamar says, Purim, Dika Nisa Lema. So what about Purim? Purim, there's also a miracle, right? Um, 
okay, so be patient. Um, you could have been one of the uh, rabbis of the Talmud. So the Gemara says, um, uh, Rav Yitzchak says, you don't say Hallel on a miracle that happened in Chutzlaretz, and Purim happened in Persia. That's outside of Eretz Yisrael. Maskif law of Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. So Rav Nachman, what? So did Sukkot and Pesach. Sukkot happened in the, in the, in the, in the desert after Yitzchak was Rahim. That's true. And Pesach. So the Gemara asked that question. So Maskif law, Maskif law of Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, Vahare Yitzchak Mitzrayim, Dinesha Bechutz Laretzu. And you could say the same thing about the, uh, we we don't say halal on sukkahs because of the because of the miracle of the sukkahs. We say halal on sukkahs because it's a festival. So sukkahs is, is in a different category, but but Purim, Purim, uh, which is a nes shebechutz laretz. Uh, I mean Yitzias uh, which is a nes shebechutz laretz. Varmin and halal kedetanya ad shelo nichnesu Yisrael laretz huchshuru kol aratzos lo marshira misha nichnesu laretz lo huchshuru kol aratzos lo marshira. Answer number one is that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, it's okay to say Shira for Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim because it happened in Chutz Laretz, in, in the diaspora. But once the Jewish people entered the land of Israel, you no longer say Hallel on a miracle that happened in Chutz Laretz. Hence, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is an exception to the rule. That's answer number one. Rav Nachman Amar, Kriyasa Zuhi Alela. Right? Uh, Rav Nachman says that on Purim, we do say Hallel. Except, what's the Halal of Purim? The reading of the Megillah. And there are actually opinions. There are two, two different kinds. of One found in the Rishonim, one found in the Yachronim. That uh, w- one opinion says, that what happens if you don't have a Megillah? What happens if you... So here we say, what, what's the Halal of Purim? The reading of Megillah. So what happens if you don't have a Megillah? So some people say you're supposed to say Halal. Some people say you're supposed to say Halal. And some people say, there's even an opinion that says, if Purim fall, what, it, it can't happen today, but were Purim to fall on Shabbos, you should say how on Purim instead of carrying the Megillah. But anyway, uh, so, the, so the, the, um, the second answer is that we do say Halal on Purim, but the reading of the Megillah is the Halal. And the third answer is, Rav Amar Bishlema Hasam. When it comes to Yitzhi Yitzhi Yitzhi, what do we say at the beginning of Halal? Hallelujah, hallelujah, Avdei Hashem. So who says Hallel? Avdei Hashem. But by implication, the Avdei Hashem say Hallel. Those who aren't Avdei Hashem don't say Hallel. So hallelujah, hallelujah, Avdei Hashem. Velo Avdei Paro. If you're also Avdei Paro, then you can't say Shira because you're enslaved to a, a human being. Only when you're independent and you're enslaved only to God, through Avodos Hashem, do you say Hallel. Hacha, hallelujah, avdei Hashem. And so on Purim, we say hallelujah, hallelujah, avdei Hashem. Akate avdei achashveroshan. Lo avdei achashverosh. Akate avdei achashveroshanan. In Purim, the Jewish people were rescued from Haman, but they didn't go back to the land of Israel. Where did they remain? They remained in Persia. And there may be Jews who never went back at all. He says, so it's... it's uh, we're still Avdei Achashverosh. We're the servants of Achashverosh. We can't say Hallel. We're not independent. We, we're not under our own government. Uh, the, to Rav Nachman, who says the reading of the Hallel is, uh, it, the reading of the Megillah is Hallel. So how could you even read, how could you say Shira or read Megillah for, for Purim? So the Gemara says, Kivan Shigalu, Chazru Lahatayr and Arisha. Once we went into the diaspora, once the Jewish people were, you can't say Hallel on an on a nation because so it's while you're living in the land of Israel. But once they were exiled in the time of uh, of uh, San and um, what was his name? Not, not San Chayr, but after San Chayr, they were taken to the ten tribes were taken to to Asher, and and the and the rest of the Jewish people were taken to. Uh, to, to Bavel, and we went, we were in exile, Kivan Shagalu, Chazru, the Hetera, and Harisha. It come, came, we go back to the original Heter that we could say Hallel on a miracle in Chutzlaretz, and that's Purim. Okay, so that, 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 that is this Gemara. And we'll see what, what we, 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 you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna make a statement about Hallel today, you have to have a Talmudic precedent. 
The question is, do we have a Talmudic precedent which would allow us to say Halal on, on an, another day? So now the Gemara tells a story about Rosh Chodesh. This, this is, it's not necessary for the class, but I figured once we're doing it, let's just be complete. The Gemara tells a story. Rav Ikla Labavel. Rav was the nephew of Rav Chia. He was a student of his uncle, and he was also a student of Rav Yehuda Anasi, who was a Tana, and who was the redactor of the Mishnah. So the Gemara in Sanhedrin tells a story that he's going to Bavel. Rav Chia, who was a Talmud Chaver, was both a student and a colleague of Rav Yehuda Anasi, asks Rav Yehuda Anasi to give smicha to Rav. He says, Yorek, can he do heter hora? Can he give paskin halachos? Uh, you know, us are mutar in terms of, let's say, Orachayim and, and Yoridea, Kashras. So Rabbi Yehuda Nasi says, Yori. He gives him smicha, Yori, Yori. Yodin, can he be a judge in a, in a base din and do Choshen and Mishpah type of questions? You know, civil law? He says, Yodin. So Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, so Rav got a, got smicha. So, um, and technically, the Gemara actually says uh, in the, in some places that Rav Tano Pal, even though Rav was the first of the Amoraim, he had the authority. He had enough authority that he was allowed to argue with the rabbis of the Mishnah. So he walks into shul in Bavel. Chazinu, and he sees an unbelievable thing. He's horrified. The Kokaru Halela Barosh They're reading Halal and Rosh Chodesh. In his lifetime, Rav never saw, and they never said Halal in Eretz Yisrael. I mean, that's clearly the implication of the Gemara. He didn't understand. Why are they saying Halal and Rosh Chodesh? Savar Laf Such a, it was such a violation that Rav, Rav wanted to stop them. You know, and the, why would he want to stop them? Well, maybe he, he thought it was a bracha levatala. And maybe he thought that we're not supposed to overpraise God either. Mar says anyone who says Halal every day is Machari from Magadev. You know, you can't take God for granted. You have to, you have to, we, we pray to God every day, but to say special shirot to God, you know, let's not overdo it. Let's just, when, when something wondrous happens, so that's when we'll acknowledge it. So he, he wanted to stop them. Kiva and the chaza, the komedalge, the luge, then he saw that they were skipping. They were skipping a hafti and lolanu. They were skipping uh, the paragraphs on Rosh Chodesh. Amash mamina minag avoseim biadehem. It's a minhag. It's a custom. If it's a custom, fine. Tana yochid lo yaskil vim hiskil gomer. And then the Gemara has a discussion about an individual. Let's say if I'm saying halal at home, I didn't go to shul. Maybe I shouldn't say halal. And you know that the Rambam actually says that halal on Rosh Chodesh is a minhag. And you know by this, the, the Rambam has a psak halacha. That ain bevarchin al minag. You're not supposed to make a bracha on the minag. And actually, if you go to to Sephardi shuls, mm-hmm. they don't say a bracha on halal and rosh chodesh because it's a minag, and they follow the 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 Rambam ain bevarchin al minag. The Ashkenazim, we say a bracha on halal and rosh chodesh. So sometimes it's good to be a Sephardi, so you can get off the hook on the bracha. You can get off the hook on Kitnios, and I know that the Ashkenazi Jews are always bemoaning that, but I just remind you that if you're a Sephardi, you have to say Slichos early in the morning, the entire Chodesh Elul, so there's the, the, there are the pluses and the minuses uh, 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 of both. Just, just remember that. All right. So we saw that they, they it's a Midag. Okay. Tosus in Meseches Tanis, right, says, Yom Tov Rishon Shal Pesach, who go me halel, avo shmoni me pesach, lo. But the eight days of pesach, you do not say the entire halel. Mishum de lo dami le chanaka, the sukkos. The chanaka dina hu ligmar halel, kol ches yamim, hoyahanes miskadel. Boya kol chad vachad yom tov. It says, why do we say halel on uh, all eight days of chanaka? It's the same thing as sukkos. Right? Eight days of chanaka, eight days of sukkos. No, he says, because chanaka, every day was a new miracle. Let's say the first day was a miracle that they found the oil. The oil should have been burned out. The next day, they, they was still oil. Another miracle. So eight day, for eight days that they had oil, it was a miracle. So every day was a special yantar because it was an ace every single day. Um, every day of Sukkot, 
uh, was a yomtiv as well. Lefisha pari hachag mis matim v'holchem because the change of the number of karbonos, like we said before. So the fact that the, the, the number of animals that were brought for a sacrifice each day of Sukkot is different, it creates, it establishes the status of, 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 a, of a new holiday. Avol Pesach, eno mishtana lo mikarbonos, lo mikarbonos, v'le yom tov, l'kach en gomrim bo halel el yom rishon. All right, only the first day of Pesach. So that's, that is uh, the, uh, the tosis. Okay. Then there's another Tosus in Masech HaSukkah, which is important for our um, situation. So anyway, when we're talking about, um, we're talking about days like Hanukkah and, and Purim, in theory, we're talking about a different kind of Hallel than the Hallel that we're talking about for uh, Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot. Uh, the Hallel of, uh, of those days is because it's Yom Tov. And also Rosh Chodesh, the Hallel of those days is because of a Minhag. And what, what is the halal of Hanukkah and, and Purim? It's, it's a function of an ace, a miracle. And in Purim, we don't say halal, but because, and the Gemara explained the reason. But on Hanukkah, we do. Okay. So Tosus in, in Mesecha Sukkah, on Daf Memde Amid Beis, I'm just, I just quoted a little piece of it. Da'afilu tzibor she'en sham kol Yisrael yachud kari lehu. When, when there's a tzibor where all the Jewish people aren't present, they're called a yachid. Uh, they said that, you know, halal has to be said for those great days when things don't happen to them. So the only days you say Hallel, the full Hallel, is when all of Israel is present, or when the Torah tells you these are days of Hallel. But if all of Israel isn't present, you don't say you don't say Hallel. Uh, certainly not the not Hallel with a bracha. Okay, now let's look at the Rambam in Hilchos Megillah. So this Rambam I want for two reasons. First of all, I, I like to quote this Rambam as the source for why it's legitimate that Yom HaTzimut should be a holiday. He says like this. He, here he does something unusual. Usually the Rambam doesn't tell stories in his halachos. He tells you the laws, the halachos. Here in Hilchos Hanukkah, he says the following. B'bayasheni, kshemalcho, it should be kshemalche. Am I... Uh, I copied and pasted it in from, from Barilan to my uh, computer, and the, the Vav got messed up here. So what happened during the, the story of Hanukkah is the Greek Syrians, um, the Seleucids, uh, made uh, rules on Israel. And they nullified the Jewish religion. And they didn't allow them to study Torah, to do mitzvahs. And they stole their money and they plundered their daughters. And they went into the Kodesh, into the Kodesh Kadashim, the sanctuary of the Beis Hamikdash, where the menorah, the menorah, the menorah was the Heichal. It's not really the Kodesh Kadashim. The, the Kodesh Kadashim is a separate area within the Heichal. They went into the, the, the sanctuary of the Mikdash. And they defiled the place with Timu HaTaharos and they made anything that was Tahar. And the Jews suffered greatly from them, and they persecuted them, a great persecution. Until the God of our fathers had mercy on them, and rescued them from their hands, and gave them salvation. And the sons of the Chashmonoim, the great, the great Kohenim, or maybe it means that one of them at least was a Kohen Gadol, and killed them. Yisrael Melech Malchus Yisrael Yeser Al Masayim Shan And uh, they uh, they uh, they established a king from amongst the priests, and royalty returned to the Jewish people for more than two hundred years until the the Chorban of the second bias. Right, the, uh, Hanukkah happened one sixty five B C E. The Chorban bias happened seventy. So two hundred and thirty five years before the destruction of the temple. Royalty returned to the Jewish people. So here I want to just digress a little bit. 
So the Ramban in uh, in uh, Vayechi on the pasuk Lo Yosur Shevet Yehuda, right? The, the, the royalty should not leave Yehuda. Talks about Yehuda is Yaakov's son Yehuda. The Chashmonayim who were calling him were descendants of Levi. And the Ramban says that Yaakov made a decree that royalty should only be in the hands of Yehuda. Certainly, once the Davidic dynasty started, you know, we make an exception for Binyamin because that was before the Davidic dynasty started, and so Shaul was the king of Israel, even though he was from Shevet Binyamin. But later on, it can't be. So the Ramban says, the Ramban says that, uh, you know, as we say in the Yeshiva, Take, the Chashmonaim were out of line. By, by, by taking the royalty, they were violating a, 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 the will of Yaakov, you know, it's hard to say it's the Orisa because it was in Sefer Bracious, but some say it's the Orisa. But later on, there is also a Yerushalmi, where you have the Parsha in, in Sefer Devarim and Shoftim of Melech, of the king. And then right after it, there's something about Kohanim and Leviim. And so right after the Parsha of Melech, it says, Lo yiyu min ha-Kohanim o min ha-Leviim. And what the Yerushalmi does is, even though it's not what the meaning of that Pasuk, it, it, it connects that Pasuk to the, to the to Parsha's Melachim. And the Yerushalmi says, and and kings should not be from the Kohanim and Levim. There's a specific prohibition on, of kings coming from the Kohanim and Levim. And if the Yerushalmi is is uh, is correct, then it's really a, a Torah prohibition. So this is my um, statement about Medina Israel. You know, one of the arguments that some people make against the state of Israel is that it is not an Orthodox Jewish state even though there are many things that are obeyed in this country, you know, the, in theory, although it's getting sometimes a little weaker, the laws of marriage and divorce are in the hands of the rabbinate, right? The laws, all public institutions in the state of Israel keep Shabbat. The Israel National Airline is kosher. And there are many things where a, an attempt is made to be respectful of halakha and Jewish tradition. But nevertheless, we know it's not perfect. And we know, you know... Uh, whether it's in, in Haifa or Tel Aviv, the buses run on Shabbat. A lot of people are Mechal El Shabbat. A lot of the, we, uh, was Naftali, well, Begin and, 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 and Naftali Bennett were, were the only two real Orthodox um, um, prime ministers of Israel. Uh, Begin was a full Shomer Shabbat, and Bennett uh, was a, a Shomer Shabbat. You know, we don't, we don't have, this is not... Uh, you know, the, the, it's hard to find the king. I, I, I have to pick kings who really kept all the mitzvahs. Chizkiyo HaMelech is one. You know, some of the other kings, even though they're great in our eyes, weren't always uh, in line with, the, with all the rules. With all the, you know, Kol HaOmer, David Chata, you know, Elatoa, you know, Rav Meidan has a great book on that. But, it, you know, there are, there are things that one might wonder about David and, and Shlomo as well. So, but, but in, in, in any event, what does the Rambam say here? Even though the Kohanim were kings, and the Kohanim being kings are a violation of halacha, what's important for Hanukkah that we celebrate, and we say, and you'll see, we say halacha for it. The Rambam says we say halacha for it is because Chazra Malchus Yisrael Yeser Mimatayim Shana, Jewish independence is a worthy value in and of itself. Even if the Jew, even if what with what comes of Jewish independence is not the perfection. Of, uh, of, of the Torah that we want, that we desire as, as Shomrei Torah mitzvos, nevertheless we celebrate it. And look what the Ramadan goes on. And, and you know, let me add a little bit more. You know that some of the kings in Alexander Yanai, he killed all the, the rabbis. Alexander Yanai, was a, he was a Sadducee. He, didn't, he rejected Torah She, she, she Balpeh. Hordus, Herod, um, you know, a lot of the kings, uh, Judah and Aristobulus, the civil wars, there were, were, were a lot of terrible things that, that took place. And still the Rambam says, he counts all those 200 years as, de- as years of Jewish independence, to some degree, of the Romans. So we shouldn't forget that. But then let's look at what he... Ukshagavu uh, Yisrael halachabes al when the Jewish people overcame their enemies, the Ibdum, and destroyed them. It was the 25th of Kislev. 
V'nichnesu lehechal, they enter the sanctuary, v'lo matzu shem in tohar b'mikdash, ele pach echad, v'lo haya bo lahadlik ele yom echad bilvad. V'edliku mimenu neiros hamaroch ha-shmona yamim, ad shekotshu zesim v'otziu shem in tohar. So they didn't have, they, they found only one flask of pure oil, and uh, they and it was only good for one day, and it burned for eight days, until they were able to press uh, olives and, and create pure oil for the Beis HaMikdash. And because of this, uh, days of, sim- of joy in Hallel and we, and we light candles. Now you could argue that Halacha Gimbal only modifies Halacha Beis. In other words, why do we say Hallel? It says we say Hallel, you know, Simcha Hallel. Because of the miracle of the oil, but we don't need then we don't need halacha alef at all. Just say when the, after the battle with the Greek Syrians, the Jewish people came into the sanctuary. They didn't have oil, but he tells the whole story that we were that we were victorious uh, over the the Greek Syrians and Jewish royalty returned to Israel for more than two hundred years, even though it wasn't perfect in terms of halacha. So now I, I might be taking a leap of faith by saying that halacha gimel also modifies halacha aleph. In other words, we're, we're, ce- we're saying we're celebrating with halal because of the miracle of the oil and the military victory, and the fact that we that that, that we had and we became because of the military victory we became independent to some degree of the uh, foreign uh, dominion, and that's why we we say halal. So we start with, this is by way of introduction. Now, one of the things that you saw in Tosus, as he said, he says, uh, he he talks about uh, um, the chileka called Yisrael en gomrim also. When all the Jewish people are not together, you don't say halal. So the question is, there might be a difference between being living here and living in the diaspora. Because living here, even though you know, we know that the time of the establishment of the Jewish state and an independent Jewish government, all the Jewish people were not here, but this is still the place where it happened. And so by virtue of the fact that you're living in a place where a miracle happened, if you look at the establishment of the state of it, I mean, you know, there's always a, I mean, in, in things like this, there's always a political side to the question. Because if you don't see virtue and value in the establishment of the Jewish state, um, so to the greatest extreme, you tear Korea. I don't know if any of you have ever gone to um, uh, the, uh, the Shuk in Meish Arim on Yom Atzmut. So there you have a very fringe group. It's not the majority. It's a small minority of people that, w- that are wearing sackcloth, torn sackcloth on Yom Atzmut. But in, in many places, in, in Yeshiva Panovich, they say Hallel. And the, they put the flag up. I don't know if they say hello, but they put the flag up. But that was a, a they, had, they once had a very open-minded Rosh Yeshiva in terms of Rav, Rav Kahaneman. He was a great man. Uh, but, but the, the um, you know, if you don't look at, 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 at you don't see the value. I, 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 am, I am sure that in the Litvashi Yeshivas, except for the Yeshivot Hezder and the, the Mechinot Kedam Tzvaiyot, they don't say hal on Yom Atzmut. I, I, I would, I would, I would strongly doubt it. But I, I hope I'm wrong. Uh, they don't say hal. They don't acknowledge that it's the day something special. Because well, I, I think like that you know, I, I, I understand. I think that for many of them, that's the case, and for many of them, I think that's changing a little bit. Things are happening.